Analytics is Atomic's dashboarding and reporting module. It generates reports like pie and bar charts on Atomic data. Installing involves an extensive list of steps because Analytics is a complete system, part agent, part database, and part web interface. We recommend sticking to the suggested sequence of steps. In the architecture diagram, we're installing Analytics and its dedicated database on the Windows host. First, Analytics communicates with the database. It extracts data from the DB to form its own data sets. It also talks to the automation engine, and so it requires a TLS certificate, which is already present on the system. Finally, it has hooks into AWI by ways of a plugin so that Analytics data can be displayed in the interface. This is the model. Analytics has three main components in orange. A dedicated PostgreSQL data store for the repository. Analytics only supports PostgreSQL. This database stores sampling data extracted from AE. The backend is the core analytics components. This is a Java web application served over embedded Tomcat and accessible by way of a REST API. On a technical level, the web app is activated using analytics-backend.jar. The backend comes with a log for troubleshooting and two configuration files for connections. The first is its main file, application.properties, which contains multi-directional data connection details to both the analytics data store and the engine database. The other is ucxeddda.ini, which contains connection details to AE. Analytics communicates with AE the same way as an agent does, so that means setting the system name, JCP host, WebSocket port, and TLS. We add a web UI plugin to AWI's config files. It serves the interface elements. It has one configuration file, plugin.properties, which contains the REST API encryption key for security and connection details to the data store. Analytics has three components, database, agents, or backend, and UI plugin. This means three parts to our install. In the first, we configure the data store. In the second, we configure the backend. In the last, we configure the UI plugin. We'll use the Windows system to host Analytics. In the first section, we copy the Analytics directory to the Atomic directory and we install PostgreSQL. We configure the database system so it's accessible remotely and execute a script to deploy the Analytics data structures. In the second section, we configure the backend. We update application.properties so that it can connect to the data store and to the A database. We copy the JDBC driver to enable data connections. We update the backend's configuration file. UCXEDDA.ini stores connection information to the automation engine. Finally, we configure the service manager to control analytics. In the last section, we copy the UI plugin on the AWI hosts. We update plugin properties so that it can talk to the backend over the REST API. The analytics files are included in the installation package, so we copy them over to the Atomic Automation directory. Download the Windows version of PostgreSQL, but avoid version 10, which is on its way out. Then head to pgadmin4, which is the PostgreSQL UI. You need to set a password for the Postgres user. We update the pg underscore hba.conf and postgresql.com files to make sure the database package is accessible on the network. We already did this for the AE database, and so it shouldn't be difficult. We comment out the existing line and add a new line with the 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 IP address and MD5, which forces password authentication. Atomic provides a script called setup.psql to upload the analytics data structures to PostgreSQL. The script is found in the data store directory. We use the psql command. The dash h parameter is for the data store host, dash p is the port, dash uppercase u is the superuser, dash w means no superuser password, so we'll be prompted. 
Then we have the script parameters using dash V. They are database username, user password, and the name of the database. You should keep the analytics defaults, all in lowercase. Dash F designates the script we're executing. We'll be prompted each time the Postgres user password is needed. Then the script creates the database and executes all the steps. Note the backend API key. Securing communications to the backend requires an API key, which the script generates dynamically. The Web UI plugin will need this key. It's required for the REST API. To retain this key, copy the contents of the command window to a text file. All the other text is irrelevant. We move on to the second section, the backend. The backend is a web application. It has a configuration file called application.properties, which stores JDBC connection details to the local data store and the AE database. The backend pulls sampling data from the automation engine so it can serve it over the web interface. We rename the sample the same way we did for uc4config.xml. The first three fields store the data source URL, the user and the password for the data store. This is the local database that contains sampled analytics data. Field settings were passed when we executed setup.psql. The file also contains details to the AE database. We can just lift this from the AE configuration file, ucsrv.ini. We have to copy the JDBC driver to a directory called JDBC. This driver can be downloaded from the PostgreSQL website or simply copied from the analytics backend lib ext directory of the install package. The backend connects to the automation engine using the same settings as any agents, system name, JCP, TLS, and so forth. Finally, we can update Service Manager with the analytics process data. In the definitions, we create a Java-based service called Analytics Backends. We find a number of arguments for things like heap space and recommend keeping those. Then we invoke analytics-backend.jar. In the commands file, we start Analytics Data Store and Analytics Backend. We move on to the UI plugin. This is the package that makes analytics UI elements available to the web interface. In order for AWI to display analytics data, it needs the analytics plugin. We copy the jar file from the analytics UI plugin directory on the Windows hosts to the AWI web application in Tomcat on the AWI hosts. We place the file in webinf auto install. The plugin needs to access the backend. It uses a configuration file called plugin.properties in the config web UI plugin analytics directory of the AWI directory on Tomcats. First, we update the backend endpoints. This is the Windows system where the backend is hosted. 
The standard port for the back end is 8090, and we keep that. The other field is the backend API key. This key secures access to the backend's REST API. It was generated by the setup psql scripts when we deployed the data store. We store the information in a temporary text file. We copy it from the Windows host. Analytics has been installed. If you need to troubleshoot, check the following. If the analytics service doesn't start with Service Manager, the issue might either be with the backend, the database connection, or a JDBC issue. Use the Service Manager log. A backend jar definition not properly populated will inform you that it cannot find the command, and if you have an invalid directory, or if it can't find Java. If you have a database connection issue, you might see a message about a missing window. The analytics backend log will tell you more. It might indicate a connection refused or a missing Java work process. In addition, the Postgres PG log and the Tomcat IA and Tomcat logs will help you find issues with the database, backend, web server, and agents. If the service starts but you get errors in AWI, you're potentially looking at plugin issues linked to plugin.properties.